This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Part 2 <clears throat> We said that anarchy is society without government. But is the abolition of government possible, desirable, or foreseeable? Well, let us see. What is government? The metaphysical tendency which, in spite of the blows it has suffered at the hands of positive science, still has a stronghold on the minds of people today. So much so that many look upon government as a moral institution with a number of given qualities of reason, justice, equity, which are independent of the people who are in office. For them, government, in a more vague way, the state, is the abstract social power. It is the ever-abstract representative of general interest. It is the expression of the rights of all considered as the limits of the rights of each individual. And this way of conceiving of government is encouraged by the interested parties who are concerned that the principle of authority should be safeguarded and that it should always survive the shortcomings and the mistakes committed by those who follow one another in the exercise of power. For us, government is made up of all the governors and the and the governors, kings, presidents, ministers, deputies, etc., are those who have the power to make laws regulating the interhuman relations and to see that they are carried out, to levy taxes and to collect them, to impose military conscription, to judge and punish those who contravene the laws, to subject uh, private contracts to rules, scrutiny, and sanctions to monopolize some branches of production and, and public services, or if they so wish, all production and all public services to promote or to hinder the exchange of goods, to wage war or make peace with the governors of other countries, to grant or withdraw privileges, and so on. In short, the governors are those who have the power, and to a greater or lesser degree, to make use of the social power, that is, of the physical, intellectual, and economic power of the whole community in order to oblige everybody to carry out their wishes. And this power, in our opinion, constitutes the principle of government and of authority. But what reason is there for the existence of government? Why give up one's personal liberty and initiative to a few individuals? Why give them this power to take over willy-nilly the collective strength to use as they wish? Are they so exceptionally gifted as to be able to demonstrate with some show of reason their ability to replace the mass of the people and to safeguard the interests, all the interests of everybody better than the interested parties themselves? Are they infallible and incorruptible to the point that they that one could, with some semblance of prudence, entrust the fate of each and all to their knowledge and to their goodness? And even if men with of infinite goodness and knowledge existed, and even supposing what has never been observed in history, that governmental power were to rest in the hands of the most able and kindest among us, would a government office add anything to their beneficial potential, or would it instead paralyze and destroy it by reason of the necessity men in government have of dealing with so many matters which they do not understand, and above all, wasting their energy, keeping themselves in power, their friends happy, and holding in check the malcontents as well as the subduing as well as subduing the rebels? <clears throat> Furthermore, however good or bad, knowledgeable or stupid the governors may be, who will appoint them to their exalted office? Do they impose themselves by right of conquest, war, or revolution? But in that case, what guarantee has the public that they will be inspired by the general good? Then it is a clear question of a coup d'etat, and if the victims are dissatisfied, the only recourse open to them is that of force to shake off the yoke. Are they selected from one particular class or party? In which case, the, in in the interests and ideas of that class or party will certainly triumph, and the will and the interests of the wills will be sacrificed. Are they elected by universal suffrage? 
But in that case, the only criterion is numbers, which certainly are not proof neither of reason, justice, nor ability. Those elected would be those most able to deceive the public and the minority, which can, which can well be the other half minus one would be sacrificed. And all this without taking into account the experience um, that has demonstrated the impossibility of devising an electoral machine where the successful candidates are at least the real representatives of the majority. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.